Hello guys, and today I'm going to cook a British delicacy for you, okay? Now, last time I used, um, for something I used this book, okay? Which has a publication date of 1995. It was originally created in 1978, but it was updated a few times, and it was printed in 1995, okay? Now, somebody complained that it was um, about the date of the book. Clearly, it was too modern for them. So, I've got a book called Alderman's Encyclopedia of Cookery, illustrated, okay? This is so old, it doesn't mention metric anywhere in the book at all, okay? Now, I looked in this book and I couldn't find a publication date. So, I looked online. I mean, maybe, I think there might have been a page missing, I don't know. So, it's quite possible there may have been one or two pages missing. This was my mum's book from a long time ago. And she said she used this in the 50s, okay? So, this is a book apparently from 1952. Right. So for those people who thought that the um, my last recipe book was just too modern, this is the one from 1952. OK. And basically, I'm going to be making bread and butter pudding. And I'm going to slightly vary it very slightly. OK. And you see it mentions ounces. Nowadays, all books would uh, mention metric as well, if they're going to mention ounces, okay? Something I'm going to guess, for example, the butter. I'm not going to measure the butter out. It's too stupid for what we're going to do. Now, what you need is you need some stale bread, okay? Now, you do not want, I'm going to tell you now, I accidentally found this, right? You do not want bread that's mouldy like that. So, you do not want mouldy bread. That is going to go straight in the bin afterwards. I found that by mistake. What you want is you want some bread that's been, that isn't fresh. Ideally, it should not be fresh. It should be two or three days old, like this. It's not mouldy, but it's a bit slightly stiffer, okay? And I'm going to use this bread, and I'm going to put it into this pie dish, okay? Now, you should really use a bigger dish, but I'm going to use a smaller one, so I'm going to use a smaller oven, and I'm going to put it in there, okay? Now, what you need is you need, as well as some egg and milk, which I'll show you later, right? Um, I've also got some butter here, some unsalted butter. You could use margarine. The butter is um, out of date. I don't recommend you use out of date butter, but I'm going to use it, okay? So, I didn't get around to using a lot of this. So, it's 20th of August. It's currently the 21st of, uh, of um, February. So, I'm using out of date butter. And... Um, you also need some, according to this, they said, some. I'm combining slightly um, what Delia said and what they said, but they both have bread and butter pudding recipes. Um, Delia said use just currants, the other person said use raisins and sultanas. I also recommend you use some sort of pill thing. I'm too late to do all that, so I've got something called um, mixed fruit which has raisins, sultanas, let's see what it's got in it, it's got raisins, um, and it's got um, some orange peel, some lemon peel, because um, I recommend some sort of peel, and sultanas, it's got raisins, sultanas, I'm not sure about currants actually, but I thought I saw, yeah, currants as well, so it's got it all in here. So I'm too lazy to do it all separately, so I'm going to use this, um, what they call, mixed fruit, okay? And now, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to get the butter, put it onto my fingers, and get a pie tin, and I'm going to, I did wash this, I'm going to smudge the bottom of the tin with the butter, okay? And I'll put a bit more butter on. Mm. 
so essentially I'm just covering the bottom with butter, okay? You can use margarine as well, okay? And in today's modern world, most people would use margarine, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a couple of slices of bread. And I'm going to put butter on it. So I'm going to um, that's in the butter. And to be honest, I prefer spreading margarine because it's usually easier in the modern world. Just because of easiness, okay? I'm going to try and put some butter on there. It's a bit difficult to do this on camera, and to be honest, these days, I don't know how they did it years ago, where they used to spread butter. It's so hard to spread butter truthfully. Um, nonetheless, I'd rather use margarine truthfully, but I'm going to put some more butter on. I'm just going to scrape it on. It doesn't really matter because it'll melt anyway. How they managed, I'll never know without margarine. There must be some technique, or maybe they used a hot butter knife, and maybe it's because I've got this straight out of the fridge, which is not really helpful, right? But it doesn't matter anyway, because it'll melt, which is what we want. So that's enough for that. I know it looks terrible, but it'll do, because when it melts, it'll sort itself out. Now I'll do the other piece of bread. I'm just going to cheat and um, sort of cut a layer like this and just put it on. Also, because I'm trying to do this quickly for the camera, because I'm also doing some real cooking for my mum at well at the same time, and I don't want to ruin that. So, I know this was going to look absolutely terrible, but never mind. So I'll get another piece. Another piece. Right. How people ever put butter onto bread, I don't know. I think you just have to put a hot knife on, but I'm too lazy. And as I said, it doesn't matter too much because once it starts cooking, it will melt and it will sort itself out, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of these um, dried fruit, which I showed you back earlier. This is part of it is going to another bag, so don't worry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this now, some of it, of the mixed fruit, into the bottom of here. I'm just going to sprinkle it in. You can use just currants if you want. So um, Delia Smith said use currants, and the other said use raisins and sultanas. You can, doesn't matter. They're all the same kind of thing. I know they taste different, but you know. Then what I'm going to do is going to put a layer of the um, bread in. Now, because it doesn't quite fit. I'm going to chop the sides off, but normally you would use a bigger one than what I'm going to do, okay? But I've just picked this one because it will go into the um, into a small oven, okay? I've never done this for a long, long time, and I've never done it with... So I'm just going to chop the... You can keep the crusts on, but I'm just chopping the crusts off purely so it will fit in here, okay? There you go. And I chop off the... And I put... So I've just, I know you can't see it on camera, but I'm just chopping off the um, crust, okay? Just because, not because you should, but because I can't fit in otherwise, right? Now what you do is you get some more currant, more um, mixed fruit, and you sprinkle it over the top again. like that and then you put another layer of the um, buttered bread on okay 
then if, if, if it's quite high you could have more layers if you wanted and now Delia said you don't but I'm going to do this anyway because the, they told you to in the um, 1952 book I'm going to sprinkle some more fruit on the top okay right so that's that okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some sugar milk and egg together and I'm going to pour it over the top here and I'm going to put it in the oven okay right right and now I'm going to mix um, some sugar now Didi says you can use caster sugar prefers caster sugar the original 1952 recipe uses normal sugar so I'm going to use normal sugar because a lot of people have it um, an egg and some sugar the sugar I've shown you and some milk okay now I earlier it was very difficult and I can't easily do it on cam so I have got um some scales here I did earlier weigh 10 grams okay on to, of sugar onto a plate okay um it's too difficult to do that I can do it with other cameras and you know but I'm too late but I think you can weigh out 10 grams yourself okay but um, I, you might want more when you do it. The reason is is because I don't want to make as much mixture as they told you to in the recipe, okay? Um, because um, it's a very small tin, okay? So now I'm going to get an egg out. And I'm going to break the egg into here. I'm going to beat the egg now I'm going to pour in the 10 grams of sugar and whisk and as well and now listen I'm just worried about so one minute Just saw a bit of eggshell, which I didn't want. Normally, I would break the eggs properly. I don't normally do it one-handed, but it's just very difficult to do things while you're filming. Okay. And now I'm going to add, um, I believe it is a quarter of a pint. Okay. So, if I just check, um, they say a pint, so I'm going to do half a pint because I'm trying to do half as much as they want. I might even do less than that. Okay. So now, I'm going to get the milk out. I happen to use um, normal pasteurised milk from Tesco. And I'm going to pour it in so it's roughly um, I think that's more than enough okay it's not the correct proportions that they've told you to use but I think it'll do because I think that um, you know I'm just worried about overdoing it to be honest because I don't think I've got that much okay so it's a bit over a quarter of a pint but it's supposed to have a half I actually put a half in because I might do some more tomorrow okay so I'll, I'll make it half a pint and they use for those who don't know, half a pint is roughly a quarter of a litre, okay? So, roughly, there's two pints roughly in a litre, okay? That's not exact, and I know a lot of people complain. So now I'm going to beat that. Oh. 
Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this over the um, bread and, you know, in the um, pie tin, which, you know, normally you'd have some sort of, you know, um, I think that's the proper term. I don't know what the correct term for it is. I'm not really bothered. Okay. And um, then I'm going to put it in the oven. And then after that, I'm going to eat it. Okay. So right, you won't really hear anything more from me now for quite a while, okay, while I, possibly, okay? So right, now so it's, this is going to be poured over the mixture, I'm going to take this downstairs, pour it over the mixture, and then put it in the oven, okay? Now, um, I haven't personally made this for many, many, many years, okay? I think we even made it at school, okay? Because um, it's such a traditional British dish, okay? I've got just something in the way, it's annoying me. Um, now, the main difference I noticed between... Um, how they told you to make it and how I actually made it was they said at the very end you were meant to put just sultanas on the top on the very very top and not sprinkle other things as well I was truthfully too lazy to go through the mixed fruit bag and pick out just sultanas I don't think it makes much of a difference apart from presentation also they said that you should pour the milk mixture on first and then on the top sprinkle the sultanas but to be completely honest with you Given it's been in the oven so long, I don't think it'll make any difference. So, if, by the way, um, you are trying to do this yourself, and 
you live in a country where you don't have access to mixed um, fruit and as I said it's only these bits to be missed out so and with these things that you put on so these things were what you were supposed to put on the top to I believe this all times I believe right however um, I wasn't bothered about presentation or things like that so as I said you meant to put it in the oven until it's golden brown and they said three quarters of an hour but that was for um, an amount twice what I was making so I put mine in for about 25 to 30 minutes okay and it looked good enough for me I check okay it's quite sweet and juicy and this is a great way people um, use for using up stale bread in the past it was a way of using up stale bread that hadn't gone mouldy but was going a bit stiff okay slightly not too stiff but a bit stiff because um you know this will um make the stiff bread more juicy okay as i said this is a genuine british delicacy Um, I'm not sure, you can even buy this pre-made, for example, from Marks and Spencer. So if you live in Britain, you can buy this pre-made, believe it or not, and then you can put it, just buy it and put it straight in the oven. <coughs> and eat it that way. So if anybody's living in Britain or wants to move to Britain, wants to try it, but doesn't feel they even come forward to with something as simple as this, they can just go out and buy it and put it in the oven and um it will do it okay but it's not cheap i'll be honest it's not a cheap way of doing it okay but there you go so this is something i think just about anybody could easily do truthfully okay as i said you can replace if you want the all this fruit mixture stuff with um currants and supposedly some peel as well but when you're not being comfortable with peel you could forget even that and just have just currants okay so you have just currants instead of the mixed fruit if you want in my opinion okay um, it's not what the experts will say but I think so so you could try it yourself okay and it's very sweet it is very juicy um, And it's very easy to make and practical. As I said, most British food is practical. It's not exotic. We don't have um, exotic herbs in this country. So if you want traditional fruit, British fruit mood, you won't find anything ultra exotic because we don't have fancy herbs in this country. Um, Delia Smith said that she preferred, said that you should put nutmeg on the top as well. But the 1952 recipe didn't mention it. And some people might not have nutmeg, so I... Provided this for those people who genuinely would like to try British food and make it themselves but don't have a lot of fancy ingredients, okay? Or don't want to go out and buy a lot of fancy ingredients, okay? So there you go, guys. Bread and butter pudding, okay? I'll just show you that up close. Right, okay. Um, I won't bore you with me finishing this off. So, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.